Hello everyone, Dodgy Software here. Blender 2.8. If you haven't seen Blender, or specifically the later versions of Blender, like 2.8 and above, grab yourself a copy and have a look at this. The new package features a much more usable interface and has become an extremely powerful product, and especially when you look at this being completely free, as opposed to Autodesk packages which are becoming more and more expensive and require licensing, um, this product is, is, is incredible. Um, one of the reasons why I've turned away from uh, Autodesk products has to do with the licensing fees. So you have, to pay, you, know, you have to pay a subscription fee in order to use them. And the moment you stop paying that subscription fee, you lose access to all of your 3D models. It kind of seems like a financial model. Um, it seems to, as a financial model, it seems to function as extortion. So today I'm going to take you through the process of getting your, if, uh, of getting your 3D models out from Blender into the Microsoft.x format, so then you can bring it into the Erlix game engine. If you have a look in the video description below, you'll see that I've put a link here to my Google Drive. My Google Drive features a version of the exporter that I've been working on that doesn't support animation. This represents a stable distribution because my animation uh, do isn't, doesn't quite work uh, correctly yet, and it's an area of ongoing research for me. If you have a look in the top right hand corner, there's a little download option, and you can click on that. So I'll get you to click on that and bring, bring it down. Um, open the package. I'm using 7-zip here because this is compressed, and inside of it you should see, oh, also yes, yeah, 7-zip is a free decompression program if you didn't know, but you can use WinZip or uh, whatever whatever uh, decompression program that you have. Um, the process of installation is very, very simple. So the first thing is, is navigate to wherever your Blender installation is. On the top of your installation path there should be a a folder with the version number of Blender, so it gets you to go into that one, then go to the script subfolder, then add on subfolder, and then the whole installation process is drag that folder from the 7-zip or from your compression program into the add-ons folder, and that's it. You've successfully installed the add-on. Um, so I have to run Blender here as administrator because of how this PC is set up. So I'll run this as administrator, but that won't necessarily apply to you. All right, so now we've opened Blender and we now have the, we should have the uh, exporter installed. So we'll go to File, Export, and you can now see that there's a new option, DirectX.x. So that's, that's the option that we're going to use to export models. I have a model that I prepared earlier that we're gonna to use today for this tutorial. So this is a simple low polygon tree. Um, uh, the, now the very first step we're going to do is we're going to go to the render tab and we're going to make sure that the cycles engine is checked on. Also, uh, once we do that, you want to check the option here for open shader language. The reason why we're doing we're, we're turning that on is because um, we're going to be using a an OSL an open shader language from shader in order to represent our, uh, our in order to represent our um, surfaces here. So. Um, what I do after I've turned those on is, is then I go to uh, the rendered uh, tab in layout, then I'll swap to my modeling and then I'll go and make sure that I choose the rendered mode again in modeling and then I'll go to shading and I'll also turn on the rendered mode there as well. So um, let's have a look at this tree and let's examine what the materials look like. So what we've got here is is You'll notice when we look at the surface here for our, this is our material tab, just so that if you didn't know, um, this here is the surface type here is script, and that's specifically because we're using a uh, Fong shader that was written with the open shader language by me. This this shader comes distri is, is distributed with with this plugin, um, and what what we do is we define a number of properties. The first being the diffuse face color, the second being the face shininess. Um, which is basically your specular power as far as your Fong shader is concerned. Your diffuse is just the surface color. Then you've got a uh, face specular color. So that is when a light's shining on it, what is the specular, uh, what's, the, what's the specular color of that surface? Emission, so that's just the emissive uh, color of that object. Um, and uh, then I've set up some really simple properties here in order to simulate a simple directional light on the object. So you can vary those properties and that's going to be on a per material basis because I couldn't find a way of doing this globally. Um, 
so the uh, the first the first thing we're going to do here is uh, I'm going to take you through the process of creating uh, just creating a textured object. So the first thing is is go to your layout tab and then go to add, go to mesh, and select plane, and we get a little plane there. So you go then to the object tab. Let's place this at uh, the coordinates 0, 0, 0, and let's increase this to 10. Let's increase the scale of this rather to 10, 10, and 10. Um, now, what I do is, is I'll click on this in the little gizmo here, and then I'm going to lower the ground down, so that way it's in the correct location. Now, at the moment, it's um, at the moment we have to. At the moment, you can see as we move around. Um, you can tell we're in cycles because you get this sort of sparkly effect that goes through. Um, now we're going to go through to our shading tab here. That is, and we're going to make sure that our plane object that we just created is selected. So uh, go to the materials tab and click new. That way we've got a new material here. Delete the default principled BSDF and add a script Check it, uh, select the external. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go through and navigate to the plugin installation folder. So C drive, program files, Blender 2.8, 2.8, scripts, add-ons, and IO scene DirectX and Fong OSL. Now then drag from the BSDF pin to the surface pin, and that's it. We've actually got a uh, Fong shader now. You can see there's a bit of a highlight there, but we can certainly stand to sharpen that up a lot. So say if we make that 800, you'll then see the specular highlight there that we're getting is a lot smaller. So that's 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 a simple Fong shader there that we've got um, now rendering our tree. Um, now the reason why I wrote a custom Fong shader for this one is because Blender Blender no longer Blender 2.8 and above no longer supports a simple Fong shader, so I've had to write my own in OSL. Um, so it is it, it, so it, each time each time we want to create a material here uh, for we will we'll, we'll reuse that OSL shader. Um, now let's go through and add a texture to this. So first thing, go to Add, go to Texture, and then we will go to Image. Open up an image. In my case, I've got one that I have in C Drive called grass and what I'll get you to do what we'll do next is we are going to drag color to the texture pin and then that's that so we now have a specular shiny grass ground now the next thing we're going to have to talk about here are normals so by default blender when it creates an object it stores all of the normals on a per face basis, and we don't really want that. We want a uh, we want a per we want uh, per vertex normal, so that way we can get some smoothing effects. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a couple of spheres. So we'll add one here, and we're going to add another one. So we have two of them now. So the first thing that we'll do is let's let's assign some materials to these. So I'm going to go to the, I'm going to make with the, with each one of them with the first one selected. Let's go through and create a new material here. Delete the old delete the uh, principal BSDF that's there. I'm going to add script. Select external. Open up our path to open up the path to our DirectX plugin. And it should be IO underscore scene direct X. Select Fong again. Drag from the BDSF pin, uh, BSDF pin to surface. And we've got a. Let's give that a try, that's better. And we've got a sphere there with a Fong shader on it. Now, you see here how what we've got is we've got per face normals rendering there. Um, now, the exporter can pick up and do smooth. Uh, do smooth, but it is per vertex normals too. So let's create a new one here. Let's repeat the same process for the second sphere. Uh, go to add, go to script, external. Let's load up our 
plugin OSL shader for FOM and DirectX FOM and drag from the BSDF pin again to surface. Okay, so um, we're gonna make we're gonna set some colors here as well so we can tell these apart. The first one I'm just gonna set to being a uh, nice shiny red. And the next one we're just going to set to be a shiny blue. So as we move around, you'll see the specular highlight shifts around with it. Also, you'll see it sort of smear around from the back. So that's exactly what we'd expect from the specular highlight. Um, what we're going to do here is we're going to select the blue one and we're going to make it so that our normals here are stored on a per vertex basis. So you go, to, you select the object and then go to the object data tab, expand out the normals section and click auto smooth. That doesn't auto smooth the normals, that has only changed the toggle inside that instead of the normals being stored on a per face basis, they're now on a per vertex basis. So we'll go to the modeling tab here and see how we've got all of the faces here selected. Go to the face tab and click smooth shade. And then when we have a look at this, you'll now be able to see the difference between the two spheres. So the first sphere here still has per face normals and the blue one now has uh, per vertex normals. So that's looking pretty good. Um, let's go through and um, let's go through and have a look and see if there's anything else we can do with these shaders. So a couple of the things that I'm going to do here is I'm just going to set the uh, ambient light color here. I'll set this to 0.53 for all of the objects that are in the scene. Okay, that's that object. Let's do that for this object here too. Now this is just setting up the amount of ambient light that's going to apply on the surface. So this is not explicitly part of the tutorial. This is to make sure that uh, the amount of ambient light, the way that I see the models inside Blender is going to look the same as the way that uh, we're going to bring this into the game engine. So I'm using uh, about 0.53 for all of the uh, all of the ambient lights in my scene. Uh, rather for the one, sorry, uh, 0 0.53, 0 0.53, 0 0.53 for the ambient lighting in my Erlich scene. So I'm just making sure that these two things uh, line up. Um, Okay, there's that material and this one. This uh, default one here in my scene is not actually used, uh, but I'll just set that up anyway. There we go. Uh, brown, yep, that's been set up. And green, let's set this up as well. Okay, there we go. So now, if you have a look there, what I'm hoping for is when we export the way that this scene looks here, that it should look almost identical uh, inside Erlich. So I'm going to save this. That's been saved. Let's go up to the File menu, go to Export, go to DirectX, and I'm going to export as tree.1 to my C drive, and I clicked Export. So navigating to my C drive, now there should be tree1.x and also the grass texture that I had there from before. So I'm going to right mouse click and copy those. Then I'm going to shift over to my meshes folder for an Erlicht project that I've got. And this one here is a slightly modified version of the shaded tutorial series that I did bef uh, that I that I released uh, a few days ago. Um, I'll provide a link to that in the description section below. So you can see now there's tree one and grass top one. Now I'm going to open up. Uh, just swap out to my uh, early project here uh, and what you'll see here is you'll see here where I set up this is my init light section in the function here you'll see how I've got for diffuse lights I've got 0 0.53, 0 0.53, 0 0.53 so I'm just making sure that the, they'll ideally look the same and also uh, in my init demo section this is where I'm setting up my uh, loading my shaders in and setting up the models this one here is loading media messages uh, meshes uh, tree1.x. So if we run this and have a look, our model should look roughly the same as what we had inside of Blender. So I think that that's a pretty close reproduction of what we had. You can see the specular highlight down there and the little shiny surface that we set up for the ground. 
you'll see how this uh, the per face normals are stored there for uh, the red for the red uh, sphere. You'll see that we've got per vertex normals here defined for that. You'll also see that they also note that there's no specularity at all on the tree, and that's because we didn't define that as a shiny surface. Anyhow, that should conclude the video. Until next time, take care.